next 12 months are crucial for Ford, is launching the Bronco and Bronco Sport and the Mach-E electric crossover. But no vehicle is more important than this. This is the 2021 Ford F-150. And while it might not look that new on the outside, there's a whole lot of important stuff going on underneath that skin. According to Ford, 92% of the bits on this truck are new. And while that might technically be true, it's hard to look at the new F-150 and not see last year's truck. Despite the similar overall design though, it's the styling, the small details that warrant the most attention. The chamfering around the doors is unusually elegant for a pickup truck, and the fascia and headlights feel better integrated. The front of the truck is certainly cleaner, at least to my eyes. But there are functional improvements here too. An available power running board, which works via a tap of the foot, runs from axle to axle to improve aerodynamics. And there's an air curtain in the front fascia as well to channel air around the front wheels. A deployable air dam is standard on every Model 2, activating at about 40 miles an hour to improve front aero. The result of these changes is a slight improvement in aerodynamics without compromising the truck's style. Bigger changes come to the cabin and they're universally welcome. On the style front, Ford made significant improvements to the materials, especially on its high-end trucks. You still won't get the thorough detailing of a range-topping Ram 1500, but an F-150 Platinum or Limited, like the truck I drove, feels substantially more premium thanks to its interesting choice of materials and flashier stitching on the doors and seats. Even more affordable examples, like the XLT and Lariat, feel richer than last year's models too. But again, it's the functional improvements that shine through, from the new 12-inch touchscreen infotainment system and the first instantiation of Ford's SYNC 4 infotainment system to the max recline seat and interior work surface, the blue oval made major strides with the F-150's cabin. SYNC 4 and that gorgeous borderless display are a joy to use, offering quick responses and much improved functionality relative to the old SYNC 3 system. The max recline seat, which can offer a nearly flat sleeping surface, isn't the most comfortable thing I've ever laid on, but it definitely works better for a midday catnap than a traditional seat. In that interior work surface, complete with a power stowing gear lever, make the F-150 a vehicle you could realistically spend the entire day in without losing any productivity. So the F-150 is available with a number of powertrains for 2021. Most of them have a 10-speed automatic. Most of them are carried over from last year. There's a 3-liter diesel, a 5-liter V8, a 3.5-liter twin-turbo V6, some kind of small base V6 that you won't see very often, and what we're in, the most exciting new addition, the 3.5 liter Power Boost Hybrid. This truck pairs a twin turbo EcoBoost V6 with a 35 kilowatt electric motor and a 1.5 kilowatt lithium ion battery. It produces 430 horsepower and 570 pound feet of torque, and according to Ford, will go about 700 miles to a tank and tow 12,800 pounds when properly equipped. That is a lot, that is a whole lot. But what's really impressive here is how well integrated everything feels. If you've read our review of the Ford Explorer Hybrid, you know that we had a lot of issues with the general refinement of that hybrid system. They could never quite figure out whether it would need to be in gas mode or electric mode or both or where the power was coming from. And it felt really, unpleasant to live with because of that. It was the same story with the Lincoln Aviator Grand Touring, even though that was a plug-in. It just wasn't as refined and well executed as it could be. This feels exactly as well executed as those vehicles should have been. It is smooth. If I stab the throttle, there's a little bit of hesitation as the 10-speed changes down, and then effortless power. This doesn't feel as relentless as the twin-turbo V6 on its own, though. There's more of a freight train-like surge with the normal EcoBoost, but this is still a very quick truck. We haven't done a zero to 60 yet because it's a pickup truck and that's kind of silly, but there is no wanting for power here. One thing we don't care for is that it still sounds like a Ford V6, which is kind of just there. Uh, if you really care about engine sounds, the five liter V8 remains the choice in this vehicle, but in terms of power and towing ability, this is really hard to beat. So let's show you some of that refinement that I'm talking about of this powertrain. We're coming up on a tiny little village type place. It's nice rural Michigan. And we're slowing down. We're doing about 35 miles an hour right now. And right now the engine is completely off. It's quiet. I am driving an electric pickup truck, kind of. 
and it'll stay that way. The engine is still off. We're maintaining the speed limit about 25 miles an hour and you can cruise with the engine completely off. This is a silent pickup truck at the moment. Stand on the gas a little bit and there's a little bit of a shutter as the gas engine kicks back on, but for a pickup truck, it's fine. If this were an ultra luxury vehicle, we might complain a little bit, but it's perfectly acceptable in this application. And more importantly, it happens quickly. There's no real hesitation before the engine comes back on. It's just pedal, second, power. That is very good and very well executed. This hasn't shown any of the poor manners that we experienced in the Explorer, and that is great news. The one we're driving though, in about a year, will feature Ford's new active driving assist. It's pre-wired for it, it's just waiting for an over-the-air update, and what that will allow is hands-free driving on certain roads, and it'll be on par, hopefully, with Super Cruise, and maybe even Tesla's autopilot. It's a really exciting technology, and the fact that Ford is bringing it to a vehicle that is literally the best-selling vehicle in the country is a big, big deal. Even in this top grade F-150 Limited, you have a double wishbone front suspension with a solid rear axle and leaf springs out back. It's kind of an old fashioned setup, especially relative to something like the Ram 1500, which is available with a four corner air suspension. And you know what? It does kind of handle like an old fashioned truck. There's some body roll, as you'll see when we approach these twisties up here. And there's some of the bad manners that we kind of expect in a body on frame truck with a solid rear axle. It shudders and jounces and kind of slides around a little bit over bumps, especially the kind of washboard stuff you find on dirt roads. Brake and turn in. The steering is pretty numb, but there's a good weight to it. It feels natural. Uh, this is not under, under boosted or over boosted. It is really well done. You can dial in steering angle as you need. It feels good. The overall handling limit of the truck just isn't that high. That said, this is a comfortable truck on normal roads. This is a smooth, for Michigan, a smooth country lane, and it's quiet, it's comfortable, there's no vertical motion of, to really mention. It feels good. This is a nice vehicle to just get across flat terrain in. Yes, the F-150 does have an evolutionary new skin, but underneath that, there is so much new technology and smart content. The Power Boost Hybrid and the smart features in the interior make this new truck more competitive than ever.